What makes a well-designed hat? Uh, if a hat is well-designed, isn't that just a matter of opinion? What makes something well-designed? Um, let's talk about that today. I'm going to talk about a few hats that I think are really, really well-designed. Um, Stetson Asher. Okay, I'm going to talk about that one. Um, I'm going to talk about the Seville, the JJ Hat Center Seville. And the Ken, uh, another hat I think is very well, well designed. And um, what else should we talk about? Let's also talk about, okay, we'll talk about my green hat. Kevin's uh, Italian green hat. It's very, very similar to an Ontario, I guess, with a bound edge, but uh, center crease. Two and three eighths inch center crease. We're gonna talk about my green hat too, but um, we're gonna talk about what I think makes a hat um, well designed. Um, I'll tell you right here at the beginning, so you don't have to sit through all of my, uh, you know, caterwauling and guitar playing and boring monotone lectures and stuff. And I'll give you the juicy stuff right at the beginning. Okay. Um, Take my glasses off for this and make a serious, dramatic point, you know. The serious, uh, well-designed hats are going to be generally something simple. Simplicity is generally design that lasts. Um, when you start getting gimmicky, like... Do you remember the two-tone straws? They had straws that were black and white, kind of woven sort of swirls and checkerboards. They came out like in the 90s or something. You know, they always try to do some gimmick, you know. Um, they last, they get played out after a year or two. Uh, do you remember the thing that was like, it was like the fedora, but just the front of a fedora, kind of a cap? I think it was John Legend came out with them, or John Legend's dad came out with them. Um, they were called Pop, Pop something, Pop Tops? Pop Tops, Pop Legends. Pop Legend, Pop Tops. It was basically the crown of a fedora with a cap brim. So they took this brim and they just cut it into like a, almost like a, you know, a half moon cap brim. And they got rid of the rest. So you had the kind of a look of a fedora with a little cap brim in the front. Um, they, they came out with them, they did okay. It took us like a year to get a second order. It was like a big deal. So we took the stuff that they had left over, which were like all rotten styles for the second order. Cause they said, okay, we get you that in like a month. But if you want a second order, it's gonna take you like another year or something horrible like that, you know, 10 months. Second order did horribly. We had to blow them out on the sale because they weren't the ones that we wanted. They were bad colors and this and that. By the time the second order was gone on sale and everything, they started advertising. They were right on the corner, of, uh, on the cover of Ebony Magazine, somebody wearing that thing. And we started getting calls like every day, every other day. Um, you guys got that hat with the, looks like a, a rim in the front, but it's like a cap fedora thing on the cover of Ebony. No, we don't have them. We've got a few bad colors left. Burgundy and the size small and extra large, you know, things like that. Ah, oh, okay, you don't have anything in uh, black or gray or, or brown, tan, nothing else? Really? All right, thanks. You know where I can get it? No. They're already played out. So, you know, styles like that, they last a year, they last two years, then they wind up on the discount rack because they're not... They're not simple, they're not classic. Every year the cap companies come in with some gimmicky stuff, you know, like a tweed cap that's got leather on the bottom or like, you know, a leather patch here, like two-tone, or they, they bring in some leather cap with a little tweed here, you know, and they start mixing styles and trying to get like creative and do weird things, and they never sell, you know, so we never order them, we stick with the basics. We stick with the basic, you know, like the ivy cap, the newsboy cap, a baggy one, a skinny one. You know, skinny ivies do really well now. They're trendy. 
Um, but that's a classic style, and that's not going to go out of style. What that is, is the evolution of the hat. It's, caps have just gotten skinnier, skinnier. People always wanted them skinny, but they never had them. So now they're offering them in a nicer cut, without all the bagginess on the side. And people are like, wow, I like that even better. So it's not really a trendy kind of a thing. Then they came out with the duckbill cap, which was like an extension of that. It was almost like a baseball cap peak on a flat cap. So kind of like a Kangol or a flat cap with like this sort of baseball cap sporty peak. Lasted a couple of years and you started seeing them on the street, you know, going for 10 bucks, made in China versions and stuff. And it was associated with a cheap kind of a mall kind of a, you know, something you might see at American Eagle, but it's not really authentic, you know, like very mallish. So we stick with the Ivies, we stick with the newsboys. They go skinnier, they go baggy with the trends and stuff, but um, we try not to get too fancy or gimmicky because the stuff that sells are the classic shapes uh, when they're done well and they're done right. Um, for instance, the Seville. The Seville is a hat that's a basic, here, I'll show you with my temple here. The Seville is a hat that's, um, like, this is a very typical American-made Stetson hat. The Seville is more of a European version of this. So what it is, it's a little more streamlined, slightly, I'm not going to say modernized, but more kind of a Euro, you know. It's like they took it and they gave it a little bit of a GQ edge. They lowered the crown just a little, just a little bit, not much. But what they really did is they lowered the band. They brought the band down to about there. And what that does is it makes this negative space here much bigger. And it gives the hat a bigger look, a taller look because of all this negative space. And the thin band gives it a cleaner, quicker, faster look. It's more aerodynamic. Where, I dropped my pick, where the big, big band like this is more functional, it's more old-timey, it looks more Indiana Jones, it looks more like, you know, 1940s movie, gangster, Humphrey Bogart, detective, film noir, all of that stuff. It's nostalgic. As you bring it down, it still looks nostalgic, it still looks classical, but it's cleaner. Um, if you look at a picture of the Seville, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's like a, I don't know, maybe a two-finger band rather than like a three finger, you know, this is about three. It's just, it's wide, but not as wide. Um, those bands are really nice. Here, let me show you. I have the same style, right? Give me 10 seconds off the camera. I'm gonna just talk to you on the camera. So it doesn't appear sort of like that. Right there. All right. This is a dust cover, by the way. That's a good thing to use to stack your hats or keep your hats. All right, this is a Seville style, basically. It's the same style. Seville was modeled right after this hat, actually. It was the hat it was modeled after. Okay. You see the width of that band? What it does is it cleans it up. It makes it look um, still streamlined, still classical, but... It's just a little faster and more balanced. It has a um, little bit more fashionable look to me. That to some people might say, okay, there's a little bit less nostalgia going on there, but um, not necessarily. Um, it's definitely, you know, it's got the same charm, but it's a more compact, you know, it's more, everything is smaller. Smaller hat, um, smaller band, smaller binding. It's just a um, little bit more understated. I like that. To me, it reads well-designed. It reads balanced, clean. Um, what you're seeing there is is a balance, you know, something that has been evolving over time, um, this style. The Seville band is the same band as this, the double band, has a 
double bow here. Right? Yeah, there's the double bow. It's a little hard to see in this light, isn't it? I know. There's the double bow. Let's look at this crown now. Look at the shape of the crown and the shadows and stuff. Clean it is. Of course, I've squeezed this and I've messed with it throughout the years. It's definitely well over a decade old. Mm -hmm. But it's clean. Yeah, let me look again. Another one right here. This one might be a little bit less molested, more original. well designed to me is balance. That's the Seville shape right there. This hat was discontinued, but we do this hat without the binding, with a whip stitch, exactly. The, the specs are the same. This is the classical shape that we used to do years and years ago when it came from Italy. Now that we do them from Spain, we change the, uh, the name to the Seville, but the specs are the same. This was the hat that was analyzed and uh, copied, so it's exactly the same. When we took the Seville, uh, the very first order for them, this was what it was based on. Um, our old classical style from 10 years ago. Now, what makes a hat well designed to me, first of all, is going to be a function thing. Um, you should have a, a flange and a brim that snaps very well. In other words, you hear that? After rolling this hat up into a cone, you know, just countless times, dozens of times, maybe hundreds of times, um, the brim still has a beautiful snap to it. Um, that's a testament to its felt, but it's probably also a testament to the way it was made. It was built perfectly, with the right kind of flange, the right kind of curve to the brim, which uh, makes a big difference. Uh, when a hat is made poorly and not flanged correctly, you sometimes you get problems like it won't stay down, or it won't stay down when it's too soft. Um, there's all kinds of problems you can get with your brim. This brim seems to behave very well. It's a nice shape. The block itself is a good shape. Um, it seems to have a good medium kind of a flange. It's not really scooped up, but it's, it's got a, it holds itself up nice and well for a big brim hat. I don't know if you notice, but the bigger the brim, generally the flatter the flange is. It's more scooped up when it's a short brim. So sometimes when you get to really, you know, long, long brims, they start to look a little bit flatter in the flange, you know, like that's a bigger brim. Okay. What makes the Asher and this hat well designed? One thing about it is the shape, the crown is deep. Um, it's got good depth to it. It's a little bit deeper than some other center crease hats that, um, that I wear, but it's soft. So when I hit the top and bottom out, my head goes that instead of pushing it out. That the hat is so supple that it gives me the room I need if I bottom out. Um, it's another reason why I love the Seville is that it's a soft felt, but it's got it's got snap. It's got a good built, nice flange to it. The way it was blocked, and it has this soft looking crown. The shadows of it. It works out being a beautiful hat to wear up like this. Um, remember the guys on, um, what show was it? It was either Letterman, I think it was Conan. Yeah, it was Conan O'Brien's show. All of the horn players were told by, um, by staff or by whoever, wardrobe or somebody, director, that they had to wear hats. Uh, most of them were, were balding, you know, and they had pretty bald heads and stuff. So, um, 
they were all told they had to get fedoras. So they came to JJ's to get some black fedoras to wear, you know, sunglasses and cool horn players and stuff. And I, I think they still wear them, you know, like to this day. Um, I don't know if they're actually playing through the COVID thing, but whatever. So um, one of the guys was asking me, what hat should I wear? You know, what is cool? What do you think? And, um, and he started going on and he said, what's that you're wearing? And I was wearing this hat. And I recommended the same hat to him. Um, it was uh, basically this hat, but it was the plain version. You know, it was just a taupe one without binding. Um, looked closer to like a taupe Seville or something, but it was this shape. And that, that shape on the top, the way that center crease is, that sculpted simplicity, the beauty of it. Um, it looked perfect, you know, the way it looked on TV with the brim up like this. It's a really good brim up hat. Um, of course, it's a good brim down hat too, you know, that's really easy to do too. Um, that's the way they're really meant to be worn. But uh, Seville is one of the hats that I, I just love the design of it. Um, the softness of it, it's light, light, lightweight. You know, you could kind of just like throw it up, it almost floats. It's very light, but not too light. When, when hats are too light and too thin, like travel hats that have no leather inside, they don't stay on. It's like, um, I don't know if you notice, but one thing that keeps your hat on in the wind on a nasty day is the leather is adhering to your skin. So when you have just a written sweatband and a super light hat, like an Explorer or an Expedition, you know, which are rollable fur felt to travel hats, they weigh nothing. That's like the lightest hat you could possibly see, like, ever. Um, feather light. The, the hats, you just throw them up in the air and they, they kind of like catch the air like a parachute. And they, you know, they're so light. Like, I don't know, it's like the felt equivalent of rice paper or something, you know. They roll and everything, and it's even softer and lighter than this hat. And they have no leather inside, just a thin piece of ribbon, a little thin ribbon sweatband for lightweight and for softness so that they roll and travel. But that ribbon doesn't stick against your forehead. You know, there's a kind of a adherence when it goes, you know, forehead to leather. It's a little bit of that, like, you know, the, the sweat or the oils of your head just kind of gets it to snap, which is why they say always brush your hair away and have the sweatband touch your your forehead, it should touch the skin. Um, it adds weight and it adds body, so yeah, hats can be light, but they can't be too light. It's just too, too, too light, it doesn't work. Um, it's just one of those things.
Is this really shallow or something? You trying it on? Yeah, I can't get it to go any further. You know, it's like the way they design it is so shallow. It almost feels like they never tried their hat on before. Um, there's one hat called the Snowy River by Akubra. It has this um, teardrop that comes down. A lot of people bump into the bottom of the teardrop and just need it lifted up just like that a little bit and then their hat will feel a thousand times better. It was almost like a modification I made for everybody. So if you have a snowy river and you're banging into the top, hit this with steam, just that, steam it, get it soft, okay? Hit it, hit it, whatever, 15, 30 seconds until it feels really hot. And then from the inside, push it up just a little, make a little, like a, what kind of shape, I don't know anything just get it up like that little triangle actually it's going to be a sort of diamond like this so you have to get the diamond higher you just push it up a little soften it soften it and push it up and stop and hold hold let it cool bam then you put your hat on and it's deeper because you just made that you know little thing in there um and it fits good Nobody sees it because it's way up on top of your head here. Nobody's able to look up from over there, you know, unless you wear it at a real extreme angle down like that, but probably not going to happen. So, yeah, so if you've got a teardrop, you could always raise that teardrop up more. It goes for any hat. You just steam it inside, soften it, and then just push it up. Make sure you don't burn your hands, you know. Feel it first. Make sure it's okay. You're good. Okay, get it up as far as you can without it popping. Try it again. Get it in. Okay, and then hold it. Perfectly still. Perfectly still. Let it cool now. So all the stiffeners inside are just like kind of hardening up again. So you just deepened up your teardrop. Very, very easy to do. It's a common uh, modification on the open road and the snowy river by Akubra. Um, almost always too shallow because it's a crease well because they're they're shallow hats they're not deep looking hats both of them um super shallow looking they're not high they're like real low slung looking hats and they're stiff so you know your head hits the top it doesn't give it just 
it hits it like a, a wall. So you need to actually alter the top. It's a little bubble, so you got a little bit more height. Got it? You ever do the thing when you crack an egg on somebody's head? Remember that? We used to do that on people's heads. And we go. Remember that? <laughs>